Good morning. I hope everyone at this point is finding their way through the course material. Again, if you have any questions over anything we talk about, there is a place on Blackboard in the discussions to post content questions. Um, if need be, I can always create another lecture about something specific um, if it's an issue. So, uh, this section is over order and conflict theory. Um, for those of you familiar with sociology, this should be a cakewalk. Um, for those of you who are not, I am going to try to make it as simple as possible. Um, but it's theory, so theory is always one of those things. Um, the idea is that we're going to introduce the ideas of the theories, describe macro and micro approaches, and then just an overview and comparison of order and conflict as they relate to society and violence. So a paradigm is nothing more than a worldview that is underlying the theories and methodology of a science. So it is the theoretical model or school of thought within that discipline. And in sociology, there's a couple of big ones. Um, order is a macro theory. It's also known as functionalism. It pretty much states that things happen because they function within the society they form they have a purpose uh, conflict is another macro theory um, this is the one that Marx is famous for if you guys are familiar with him um, pretty much everything is a result of a struggle uh, between those with power and those without and then symbolic interaction is a micro theory and it's a little harder to explain but it is pretty much when you look at individual interactions between people within a society and how they communicate with each other using words gestures symbols etc so Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't realize that I had animations on here. So, functionalist versus conflict theory. Um, the functionalist or order approach is based on cultural homogeneity. So, things want to be balanced. It's all about stability. If you think about it as a living organism, it needs to have homeostasis. Everything needs to be working together in order for the entire thing to function. So the primary social process is cooperation. In contrast, when we look at conflict theory, it is quite the opposite. The theory is based on cultural uh, heterogeneity and conflict. So the entire thing is based on instability and this um, power struggle where the primary social process is competition, usually for resources of some kind. As far as the foundation of the society, according to order, the foundation is idealism, where beliefs, values, and the system of knowledge form the foundation of the society. So this is an ideal, perfect 
things just kind of balance and work together the way they're supposed to. For conflict, it is materialism. The foundation is the system of material, cultural, and physical reproduction of things. The mode of production is composed of forces and relations of product of production. So it's all about what are we producing? How can we produce more of it? If you're not producing it and you don't have access to it, how do you get it? This could be items, this can be education, this could be families or, you know, attention from others. It's all about what you have. I'm really questioning my decision to put animations on here. I'd much rather see them all at the same time. Okay. So along with that, divisions within the society. For the functionalist approach or the order approach, the class, gender, and ethnic divisions are normal. This is completely natural. They serve a purpose. Um, for the conflict approach, those same things are social creations that are rooted in history and they are ever changing and they're only maintained by means of social control and ultimately violence. So while we are covering it, functionalism and order are not extremely popular in the subject of violence because it's kind of hard to justify all of it, but that doesn't mean that it's never used. There's a place for everything. Um, the role and function of societal institutions. Let me make sure I have everything up here. Okay, so from the order approach or functionalist approach, these institutions are reflections of the cultural system. The stress is on how they are linked together and how they function efficiently with each other. So this piece works with this piece that works with this piece. These are cogs in a machine that are working together to make everything function. So that's a really good way of thinking about it, and if it helps you remember. Um, also, there's a focus on how they create boundaries around the society, and they integrate new members into that society. So they put up this little border and you really need to be able to get in and function within these to be a part of that society. Otherwise, you just don't really fit. Um, for the conflict approach, as far as institutions go, they function to maintain and reproduce the society. That includes class, gender, ethnic divisions that are the foundation. So these institutions function as a mechanism of coercion and social control. So how does social change happen then? According to functionalism, the change is evolutionary and comes from the elites down. So this is the trickle-down effect, um, and change is driven by economic, political, and cultural elites. So nothing happens unless the people at the top say that it's good for you. That's how that works. Uh, for the conflict approach, change is a product of the conflict that form the or between the divisions that form the the foundation. So this is social movements, this is riots, this is um, walkouts, this is strikes. These are the things that produce the change. This is where it starts at the grassroots level and goes up. So what causes all these social problems? 
according to functionalism, the dysfunctions in the institutions or the processes that link them. And these dysfunctions result from rapid changes in the society. So it's not the institutions that are the problem. It's the changes that are causing disruptions. So they're throwing off the balance and the homeostasis of the organism, if you're thinking about it as a creature. For the conflict approach, divisions that are at the foundation of society and the social relations that exploit stem from these divisions. So the nature of the divisions and the conflict that, caught is, that comes out of them lead to the problems. So whereas in functionalism, we said, well, there's nothing wrong with the system or the institutions. It's when we change it that's the problem. This is saying, no, the, the problem is the way that these are set up. They are set up to favor one over the other, and that is inherently going to cause conflict because why would you be okay with the dude next to you getting more than you if you're doing the same kind of work? That's the idea. So we know what causes it. We know where they come from. So how do you fix them? Um, according to functionalism, the solution is found within the parameters of the society. You just have to tune the system up. So that means, you know, tightening a couple cogs here and there, shaping up the institutions a little bit, and then poof, it's fixed. For the conflict approach, if you want to fix it, you need to find some fundamental changes. This is reducing and eventually eliminating the divisions that are inherent to the institutions. That's that bottom up. Somebody at the grassroots has got to say, this isn't working, we need to fix it. And reducing those inequalities is what's going to eliminate the problems. Okay, political orientation, um, there really isn't um, I don't know, I don't know. The book talks about this. I'm not sure I'm really on board, but um, according to functionalism, there's conservatives and there's liberals, and the solutions are found within the system. So these are voters. This is political movements. This is, you know, uh, grassroots campaigns for third party candidates. Um, it's setting up to allow the system to work. For the conflict approach, it doesn't work. The political system doesn't work. The voting system doesn't work. So the solution to that is to change the system. This is um, the idea of getting rid of the electoral college. This is the idea of opening voting to more than two or three parties. This is the formation of new parties. I mean, this is everything that we've seen in the last couple of years has been a bit on the radical side, um, at least as far as poli uh, political orientation. So how do we approach violence from all of these things? Okay, so according to functionalism, the focus is on individual and collective violence. So groups, gangs, um, with the intent of the actors is required for it to be violence. So this is how we define what violence is. 
So if you hit somebody with your car, but it was an accident, it's not violence because you didn't intend to hit them. You didn't intend to hurt them. So the people that do things on accident or, um, that's, that wouldn't be considered violence. So the definition is relative to the society and culture, and the focus is on criminal forms of violence. So what is considered violence in America is not necessarily what's considered violence in other countries and other cultures. Um, we generally frown upon spousal abuse and child abuse and there are definitely some cultures where those things are perfectly fine. So the definition of violence is relative in that sense. Um, but what the order and functionalist approach looks at is specifically the criminal forms. So the things that you can go to jail for. And they have the belief that a certain level of violence is innate to humans. It is just the way that we are. It's perfectly natural. It's normal. Uh, the conflict theorists, on the other hand, um, their focus is on the individual, institutional, and structural forms of violence. And the outcome is not the intent, but the... Um, the outcome is what's important. So you're going along and you hit somebody with your car. Well, you didn't mean to hit him, but that doesn't mean that he's not hurt. So it's still violence because it's the outcome that matters, not whether or not you meant it to happen. Uh, conflict strives for a universal, excuse me, universal definition of violence. So, they, the idea is to get rid of, well, this is defined as violence here, but it's not defined as violence there. The outcome is always the same. You're injuring someone or you're hurting someone. Therefore, it shouldn't matter if there's a cultural difference. So those two things are very closely tied together. And lastly, that violence is learned, not innate. Sorry, I need to pause this for a second. Okay, sorry about that. My son's getting ready for school. He needed my assistance. Okay, so the cause and role of violence. What, what does the functionalist or order paradigm say. So the focus of them is that it's what's wrong with the actor, the physical, psychological, social issues of the person. The focus is the person and what is wrong with that person to have them commit this act of violence. It's on the disruptive role that it plays. It is causing a break within this cohesive little unit that we have within society. And violence that is functional to maintaining the society is generally not the focus of study. So the violence that keeps everything running the way that it should. So this is the type of stuff that is uh, coercion, um, police force, judicial force, the things that make it work are not the things that we're worried about. We're worried about the things that kind of mess up the good picture. The conflict approach the focus is on the social relations that cause the violence. So what is causing, like, what's the root of this um, 
power struggle that is the source of violence. That's what they're trying to fix. Uh, this includes the hierarchical exploitive relations um, that are fundamental to these institutions and causing the violence. Um, violence can be constructive, adaptive, disruptive, or destructive to the social order, depending on how it's happening. If you are engaging in an active rebellion against a violent regime, then that violence that you are partaking in in response could be constructive. So not all violence is bad. Sometimes it causes good change. So what is destructive and what is constructive? Because from the outside, it all looks pretty destructive. What, what kinds of things would be considered good? You know, are these the uh, riots that are looking for change? Is this the um, the forced exile of you know someone that is a bad person in the community or bad political figure? What about? Um, I mean, these are all 